Well, well, well. The New York Times, very left-wing newspaper, is reporting like it's breaking news that many atoll islands, like the Maldives, that we were told would drown because of global warming, rising seas, they aren't drowning at all. Some, actually many, are growing. Now, to you viewers or readers of my column, you have known this for years. I mean, I've quoted many times some of the main experts the New York Times now has found, and I've said the same thing for at least 15 years now, which again proves that the difference between a conservative and a leftist is time. Time to let the real world prove their theories wrong. Now, the short explanation for the refusal of these islands to drown is that uh, waves dump sand and dead coral on them, etc. But this actually old news about the Maldives exposes one of the most famous stunts to ever push this drowning island scare. And how the media fell for it. You remember, I'm sure, the president of the Maldives holding a meeting of his cabinet underwater in 2009 to scare us into thinking global warming could wipe out his low-lying country forever and we should spend big money to save them and the other islands. The media bought it. In fact, some on the left, like the left-wing Guardian, they're still trying to flog this fake scare. Joining me every Tuesday is Matt Canavan, the Nationals MP and former Resources Minister. Matt Canavan, good to see you. What does this latest example of that debunked scare tell you? Well, it tells us that uh, we really should look again uh, at all of this. Uh, we're constantly told that this is the science, that the science is in. But when you dig down on this uh, scare campaign of, of what was global warming, now climate change, or sometimes extreme weather events, uh, invariably it is based on, on computer modelling, uh, on projections, on predictions, but very rarely on what actually has happened. And what has actually happened is that... Uh, the, the models, the predictions of the particularly the alarmist climate scientists have been proven to be wrong and very, very, very wrong. And that, Andrew, is like what real science should be. Real science should be uh, about uh, making a prediction, testing a hypothesis against real world data. And uh, if that uh, data contradicts the hypothesis, then you throw that out. And what should be thrown out is the alarmist uh, suggestion that we're on track for some existential threat now. Uh, because of, of growing anthropogenic carbon emissions. That's just not the case. But I'm afraid to say, uh, Matt, that uh, these scares do work. You have a look at the scare campaign right now against the Coalition's plan for nuclear power. Now, what disappoints me is that the Queensland Liberal Nationals under David Crisofulli is too frightened to even discuss your plan at the state conference on the weekend, which I know is ahead of the election. They want to play it safe. But Chris Afouli has actually said nuclear power is not part of his plans. What's wrong with this guy? Well, look, uh, I might leave that to others, Andrew. You put me in a difficult position. Obviously, I have a different view uh, than David Chris Afouli here. I think our energy system desperately needs reliable sources of power. I mean, one thing that David Crisofilli is going to do is make sure we get that coal-fired power station going again. That's important. So he's talking about that. He actually mentions the word coal, which is pretty rare uh, among political leaders right now. And I think we need that for many, many more years. Uh, but we do have emerging gaps. Admittedly, for, the, for David, those gaps are more emerging in New South Wales and Victoria, more imminent in those states. He's not, he's not planning to be the leader of those states. Uh, and we do need leadership there to, to show, well, what are we going to do if these coal-fired power stations do go out of, uh, out of service? How are we going to replace them? We know, we can clearly see that wind and solar cannot replace these power stations without the large-scale loss of thousands of manufacturing jobs and escalating power prices for Australians. So we have to think of, of other ways. Uh, I think Peter Dutton deserves credit for showing some courage here and yes, we'll have the mother of all scare campaigns out there. But yeah, you're right about the scare campaigns. They are a concern, but I also think Australians are waking up and you can see that in the growing support for nuclear energy. Well, I tell you what, uh, I worry about the quality of the debate here, though, uh, Matt. Uh, I visited three countries last month that happily used nuclear power. I didn't see any three-eyed fish or three-eyed bears or whatever. Um, the CSIRO, our top science body, has come up with, in my opinion, a completely dodgy report claiming nuclear power is much more expensive than it really is. 
Does that shock you when you see how it... Well, yeah, I'll give you an example. It vastly underestimated mm. how long nuclear power stations should stay in business, which, of course, then makes them cheaper to run. Yeah. If they can stay, what, 80 years in business, much cheaper. Well, I wish, I wish I could say it did shock me, Andrew, but uh, the problem has been that our public service uh, has degenerated and been degenerated to a state of politicisation over many years. So it doesn't really shock me that we have... Uh, some public servants willing uh, to genuflect to the government of the day and whatever message they would like to hear. Uh, they become used to that. The days that our public service would provide frank and fearless advice to their ministers or to the general public are long, long gone. That just doesn't happen anymore. And that is sad and I think a real weakness in our, in our institutions compared to what was there a generation ago. But it's just very hard to find any of that courage and leadership across the public servants. And unfortunately and sadly, the CSIRO are just the latest example of that. Uh, I mean, you, you compare the CSIRO's conclusions. Again, their, their conclusions are based on modelling, on projections, not on real-world data. Uh, it's a bunch of assumptions and inputs into a spreadsheet. Compare that to the conclusions of the International Energy Agency, which look at real-world data, real-world power stations across the world, and they conclude that nuclear it energy is. is the cheapest low-carbon form of power. And uh, I've never seen the mainstream media press, Chris Bowen, on why... Well, why is it that the, the international agency that looks at all of these things across the world has a vastly and diametrically different <laughs> conclusion than the CSIRO, who are not really investigating the real world at all? And why are so many countries building so many more nuclear power plants and we think, oh, no, you know, too evil to do... Really. Matt Canavan, thank you so much for your time.